I'll call to order this meeting of the Coyote County Board of Education, Agenda 803, 6.30 p.m., Tuesday, October 10th, 2023. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. Thank you, you may be seated. All right, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Uh, recognition is Dr. Horton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At this time, I'll call on Public Information Officer Dean Jackson. Bring your recognitions, Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Dr. Horton, board members. Uh, the first of several presentations tonight is our core business. We have Western Elementary School here tonight to give us a demonstration of an English language arts curriculum. Principal Cheryl McCharge is here, and she, I'll ask her to come forward to introduce her teachers and students in tonight's fifth grade English lesson. Good evening, I'm Cheryl McCharge, the proud principal of Western Elementary School. Um, I'm here tonight to share a little bit about what we're doing in upper grades elementary school um, pertaining to phonics. So as you know, literacy has been a big push across the state and here in Coweta County, we have our, also been charged with um, increasing literacy rates at our school and that's something that we have really embraced here at Western. Um, oftentimes phonics and learning how to read is something that you associate with younger elementary, um, but that is not where the work ends. So we are here tonight to show you a little bit of what that looks like in some upper grades lessons. And we have Dr. Dana DeGenero, who is a fifth grade ELA teacher and a teacher leader at Western and some of our amazing students to share with you what that looks like. So thank you. Good evening. I'm an upper grades teacher at Western Elementary, and I want to emphasize the critical importance of students being able to fluently read and decode words. Struggling with word decoding can hinder comprehension as students may lose track of the text meaning when they encounter unfamiliar words. This academic year, Western is committed to providing our students with effective strategies to tackle unknown words confidently. To assess our students' phonemic knowledge, we administered a spelling inventory for first through fifth graders. This assessment helped us to pinpoint specific phonic skills that students were lacking. We've implemented a daily skills block where teachers group students based on their specific phonics gaps identified through this data analysis. Each phonics group dedicates approximately 30 minutes per day to a three-part drill and exercises that focus on segmenting and decoding unknown words. Today, we're thrilled to introduce to you some of our remarkable fifth grade students from Western Elementary. They will demonstrate how they're learning to approach challenging words in authentic text, ultimately enhancing their comprehension and understanding as they read. Please welcome my students, Ian Castro, Riley Johnson, Chioki Johnson, and McKinley Brown. All right, boys and girls, what are some fall treats that you enjoy eating? Well, today we're going to read a technical text about fall treats. But before we start reading, I want you to scan the first paragraph. And I want you to circle any words that you do not know how to pronounce. All right, raise your hand. Did anybody find any words that they did not know how to say? Uh, Chioki, spell your word. Okay, and was it you, McKinley? Spell the word that you did not know how to pronounce. All right, boys and girls, I want you to get out your marker board and I want you to write this first word on your board, please. All right. 
right, now we're gonna go through the four steps to decoding a multisyllabic word. All right, so step number one, what are our vowels? Okay. okay, that's right. A U is a vowel team, so let's just underline that one time. And I'm just going to give it one V instead of two. Now that we've identified our vowels, let's look in between our vowels. What do you see between the A U and the U? A consonant. So we're going to code it with a C. Okay, so now we're going to do step three. We're going to divide it into syllables. So we have vowel, consonant, vowel. Where should we try breaking it first? After first vowel. Okay, so draw your syllable break. And now let's identify the syllable type so that we know what type of vowels that we're working with. So AU, what's our syllable type? What is it? Vowel team. So we're going to code it with a VT. And then our second syllable. What syllable type is that? Closed. How do you know? Okay, we have a vowel followed by a consonant. What else do you notice about this second syllable? Riley? Okay, if we have an N after the M, what does that mean? It is silent. So draw a line through it because we can't say that sound. All right, now we're ready to read our word. Ready? Okay. What does the word autumn mean? Anybody ever heard of it? McKinley? Another word, for fall. Another word for fall. All right, board members, at your desk, you have a marker board. I'd like you to join us with the word I C O N I C. All right, step number one. First, find your vowels. What are our vowels? I, O, I. Okay, so label those with a V. Step two, we're going to look in between our vowels. Okay, our first two vowels, what do you see? A consonant. A consonant, so label it with a C. Then we, in between that O and that I, what do you see? Another consonant, Another consonant so label it with a C. Okay, now let's break it up into syllables. We have vowel, consonant, vowel. Where are we going to break it? After the first vowel. Okay. And then let's look at the next part. We have vowel, consonant, vowel, but do you notice something? I see, we already know, says ick, so we're going to go ahead and break it here. Usually when you have a vowel, consonant, vowel, the majority of the time, you're going to break it after the first vowel. But in this case, um, you would actually break it after the consonant, which is the least familiar way. So that's where we kind of have some trial and error with our phonics decoding. All right, so let's look at our syllable type. What's our syllable type for this first vowel? Open. Open. So what does that mean? Long I. Okay, in the middle, what's our syllable type? Close. What's that mean? And then we have ick at the end. Let's sound it out. Ready? Iconic. What does iconic mean? Ian, do you know? Okay. Let's see if you are correct. So now let's just read our first paragraph so we can practice now reading these words. All right, thank you. Before we end, boys and girls, how has this strategy of helping you to decode multisyllabic words helped you in your reading? Ian, you want to go first? Yeah, this, this has helped me a lot because I always just, I always just read the first letter and keep reading. So you would just say the first letter and keep reading? Yes. Okay. Riley, how has this helped you?
Okay, Chioki? And McKinley. This helped me because I used to mix up the vowel sound if it was long or short, but now if I decode the word, I can tell if it's open or closed and now know if it'll make the long or short sound. Thank you all so much for your time, and we have given you an iconic autumn treat for you to enjoy as well. Thank you. As you've seen, we have some fantastic work going on in our schools when it comes to literacy and our focus as a school system on literacy. And our next presentation, our next recognition tonight is a continuation of that. It's of Eastside Elementary School, which has been recognized as a state literacy leader. In fact, I have uh, Principal Jim Fowler of Eastside here tonight along with uh, his third grade teaching team. I'm gonna ask them to come forward, if you would, while I make this recognition. Uh, the Georgia Department of Education has recognized Georgia schools this year with exceptional achievement or growth in third grade reading. Schools with 90% or more of their third grade students reading at grade level or above were recognized for outstanding achievement and schools with 15% or higher increase from 2021-22 to 2022-23 among its students are being recognized for outstanding growth this year and as literacy leaders. A total of 100 155 schools in the state of Georgia met those qualifications. Uh, 70 elementary schools were recognized for their achievement. 84 were recognized for growth. Only one school in the state of Georgia, Eastside Elementary, qualified in both exceptional categories. So I'm going to ask Mr. Fowler to come tonight and uh, introduce his uh, school leading third grade team and tell you a little bit about their achievement. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Good evening, everyone. So when we were asked to come forward, um, I'm glad that I got to bring the dream team because if we're going to be honest about what happened and the achievement of the students at Eastside Elementary School, we've got to talk about uh, quality teachers who I get out of their way, allow them to do what they do, and that's starting at the pre-K level, going on through the fifth grade level, uh, trusting them to, to do uh, and pour into these kids and to help them to be successful, but also to uh, forge those relationships like we saw with, uh, with Western right here, uh, where the kids buy in and believe in what you have them to do. So it's nothing uh, but them overcoming the, the leadership that they have in me, uh, but this, this team here, I'm going to introduce this team and uh, let them speak a little bit about the uh, hard work that they've done to, to get us to this point. I have my assistant principal, Dr. Teagle, and her heavy work in our MTSS process. I have Ms. Jordan, Mackenzie Sibley, Tammy Eason, Melissa Fisher, and Paula Church. And I'm going to let them come up if they want and just say a little bit about some of the, the things that we're doing and the good work that we're doing at Eastside. Good evening. Um, I can't take all the credit for the MTSS system. Um, we have really um, had a collaborative effort to improve um, the supports that we give students. So in its simplest form, MTSS is basically our process that we go about getting the students the support that they need. The goal is to eliminate the skill gaps before they move on to the next grade level. Um, and so they're leaving the grade level on grade level so that we, um, like I said, can eliminate those gaps that they have. And so we start with tier two and the tier three process. A lot of those students do move on into special education if they qualify, um, but it did take a big mind shift in knowing that 
our MTSS process is not the road to special ed, but in fact, it's the opposite, um, to get them that support that they need. Um, and a big part of that um, is the teachers as well as EIP. Ms. Church is um, an EIP teacher, but she's also my MTSS coordinator, um, along with uh, Ms. Wood, who is also an EIP teacher. But it is from the work of the teacher, so I really can't take credit for it. Um, when Mr. Fowler came to us and said, what do you think are some things that, you know, because he knows what's going on in our classrooms, but he was like, what do you think is promoting literacy the most? And I said, to be honest, I cannot pinpoint one particular thing. It's a whole host of things that add up. It 100% is a team effort. If you're teaching ELA, of course, that that's a heavy load on you, but it's also going on in science and social studies. It's going on with word problems. It's going on. Literacy goes throughout all subject areas, and we don't ignore that. Um, I know um, Ms. Teagle spoke about our EIP. I, I wish she would come up. Would you come up? <laughs> um, because I worked closely with her, especially last year, with the third graders that we had last year. And she is phenomenal at targeting the gaps that we have. And really, she's a big part of the MTSS program. And without that, you know, phonics instruction is not heavy in third grade. It is there, but it is not heavy in there. And that's why I really appreciated the fifth grade lesson. Um, but with her being able to target some of the gaps that we are missing, I'm able to really focus, we're all able to focus on the curriculum that is heavy on writing and scaffolding all the skills that we need to do. So I feel like it's a whole making goals with the students, having relationships with them where that we believe in them and they buy into it and they believe they can do it. It's just a whole host of things. But I wanted her to speak just a little bit about, you know, how she targets some of that. Um, I was a former third grade teacher and I saw the lack of phonics. I don't guess that's not importance, but it's just not as big of a part of the curriculum once they leave second grade. And honestly, a large majority of kids do not have those basic phonics skills when they enter third grade. And third grade becomes that year where you, you're reading independently. You know, you're reading to learn, not learning to read. And so as an EIP teacher, I saw that gap and started focusing heavily on phonics, not just beginning letter sounds, things like that, but the vowel teams, the syllables, the lesson they did in fifth grade today, I actually did with third grade today, we immediately identified the words we couldn't say, and we wrote them on the board, we broke them into syllables, we looked at the chunks we did know, and that is just core, it just gives them the confidence or a skill to know how to decode a word they don't know. If you can't decode it, and there's multiple words like that, you're not gonna comprehend what you're reading. And the lessons we do as a whole group are on grade level. I may assess them at their individual level, they may be assessing at a second grade level, but they still need that same ability to decode a word and figure out what it means and use the context clues around it. So that, I think, is a key, a, a big part of the success of these kids that are coming in, you know, significantly below grade levels to have that direct phonics instruction. And I get them, you know, 45, 50 minutes a day, and a good half of that is, is phonics instruction, and the other half is a, you know, another reading skill, whether it be comprehension, context, clues, summarizing, whatever it may be. But you've got to have that core to get where you need to go. And they, some of them, a lot of them do not have it when they come to us. So that, I think that's a huge part of it. And I was glad to see that Western did that with their fifth graders. I tutor a fifth grade and had done a similar thing to that today. So I'm glad it's, it's, it needs to be become needs to become more a part of the upper grades curriculum because I think they lack those skills and there's so much more to cover that I think it just gets lost a lot of times. So that's, that's where I see they need the help. I'll speak in regards of literacy, how we integrate it into math and science and social studies. Ms. Jordan and I um, get the privilege of teaming with these ladies that are teaching literature, but honestly, the foundation starts with the relationship that we have with each of the kids. They're not going to get anywhere with the literacy if you don't know the kids that are sitting in your room. And if you don't have that relationship and you don't have that background, you're not going to get anywhere in their education because you're not reaching them where they're at and you're not understanding what they're coming into your classroom with. And so when we're able to understand that, then we're able to integrate it into our math and our science and social studies. And it's able to go across all of these different content areas. 
specifically for math, every single day that the kids are coming in, they're getting a word problem, and those are coming from the iReady curriculum that the county is providing. And that is allowing us to integrate that literacy into their math content, and they're understanding those vocabulary words and those concepts that's then going into both of those content areas. And they're able to spiral review and understand more of those math concepts as well. Um, and the same goes along with our science and our social studies curriculum. We're using the vocabulary words that are being taught in our, liter in our literature classes. And then our kids are coming into math and science and social studies and they're already having that foundation of what those words and vocabulary words are. Just today we were talking about topographical maps and my kids immediately said, we learned about this last week in Ms. Fisher's class. We already had the vocabulary word. And so it's coming across in all of the different areas, which is making a huge impact on all of their learning and curriculum. Thank you for recognizing our success in literacy. Um, we have a wonderful team of teachers and staff at Eastside that have been crucial in supporting literacy at Eastside. Um, we together work to be reflective in our learning approach. So we're constantly reflecting on student learning and their progress. Um, we work with the parents and the students to make sure that we're all working toward the same learning goal for that student. Um, and we've used the iReady program, which has been, I feel, um, crucial in helping the students get the more rigorous approach to learning, no matter what level they're at. Um, and I'm thankful for Dr. Teagle and Mr. Fowler because they've been very supportive in their approach and leadership. And that really has helped us to feel like we can do what we know we can do in the classroom. So I did just want to say in closing, um, y'all, we didn't catch lightning in a bottle out at Eastside. We're doing the work that is being done throughout Coweta County. I know you know this as board members. We are blessed with an amazing student body, with, with amazing supportive parents, and to have the resources and the tools and, and being equipped as we are uh, through our uh, Board of Education and through our central office. I mean, we're, we're doing the work that everybody's doing. We just... Uh, you know, it, it, it clicked and came through, and we're just really uh, proud and excited for our students. Congratulations to you guys on being the only school in the state to win both literacy awards. And I think the work that you're doing, like you said, Mr. Fowler, it's representative of the work that's going on across the district. You guys know we've set some really big goals, especially when it comes to third grade literacy rates. And I cannot wait to see the hard work continue to pay off across the district. Great job. I'd like to just take a minute. Well, I, you, you can take your photo while we're talking, but I would just like to say um, outstanding. We were out there uh, with Superintendent Richard Woods, and many of you may not know this, but Christy Todd, who is the current t uh, Georgia Teacher of the Year, was educated at Eastside. And so she came to celebrate you guys, and I thought what a fantastic um, legacy to say our Georgia Teacher of the Year was educated at Eastside. And another thing, y'all talking about reading, which I love literacy, as you know, I'm a writer and I adore uh, increasing literacy, but your children were incredibly well behaved. They sat there, I was impressed, as a mother of four, right? I was impressed. They, they were well behaved the entire time we were in the building. They did not move. And I actually said, wow, this third, I need to meet this third grade team because they have got to be, these kids knew exactly what to do. So congratulations. I'm very proud that you are from District 1 because that is my district. <laughs> And I'm also very proud to, um, I'm going to be announcing you guys at the Georgia School Board uh, Conference next month. I will be bragging again on how well you're doing because you were the only one in the state. So well done, well done. Yeah, congr <clears throat> Congratulations again to Eastside. And for our final recognition tonight, uh, we have four schools who are here. And they're here to be recognized for achieving the distinction of Title I Reward School or Title I Distinguished School. These designations are given to uh, Title I schools in Georgia who have shown some of the top academic gains or highest levels of academic performance among Georgia's Title I schools. So I have uh, federal programs and Title I director. 
uh, Dr. Melissa Wimbish, who is here. I asked her to come down along with the principals of these schools uh, because we're going to recognize Welch Elementary School, represented by Principal Janice Smith, Western Elementary School uh, from principal, with Principal Cheryl McCharge, Elm Street Elementary School, with, represented by uh, Principal Christy uh, Hildebrand, and Northside Elementary School, represented by uh, Principal Amy Addison. Uh, Dr. Wimbish, I'll turn it over to you. <laughs> Good evening, Superintendent Horton and the Coweta County School Board members. I'm Melissa Wimbish as a Director of Federal Programs, as Mr. Dean said a few minutes ago, to recognize Title I schools for making significant progress in improving student achievement or significant progress in closing the achievement gap. The Georgia Department of Education honors K-12 through schools through the Title I Achievement Awards Program. This program recognizes and honors three categories of schools, Title I Distinguished Schools, Reward Schools, and National Distinguished Schools. First, I would like to recognize two of our Title I schools as 2023 Reward Schools, Western Elementary and Welch Elementary. If you all will come down, please. These schools ranked in the top 5% of Title I schools in the state making the most progress in improving the performance of all student subgroups by comparing content mastery scores from the most recent two years of the GMAS assessment. Congratulations to Dr. McCharge, at principal at Western Elementary, and Mrs. Smith, principal at Welch, along with their staff, students, and school family on a job well done. Next, I would like to recognize two other Title I schools as 2023 Distinguished Schools, Elm Street Elementary and Northside Elementary. These two schools ranked in the top 5% of Title I schools in the state that have the highest absolute performance for all student groups based on content mastery of the current GMAS. Both schools are eligible to apply for the 2023 National Distinguished Schools. Congratulations to Mrs. Addison, principal at Northside, and Dr. Hildebrand, principal at Elm Street, along with their staff, students, and school family on an awesome job. I must mention that Elm Street also received the 2022 National Distinguished School Award um, a couple years ago. All four schools will receive a certificate and a flag or a medal, to, a medal sign to display at their school. Thank you for it all, well done. All right, thank you all. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of September 12th, 2023? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Action items group one, Dr. Orton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The first action item I have for you in group one is to approve the FY 23-24 non-discrimination title nine and equity in sports compliance coordinator. I recommend appointing Dr. Mark Guy, Assistant Superintendent for Administrative Services, as the non-discrimination Title IX and Equity and Sports Compliance Coordinator for the Coweta County School System for the 23-24 school year. Recommend approval. Is there a motion to approve the appointment of Dr. Mark Guy for the FY 2023 through 2024 non-discrimination Title IX and Equity and Sports Compliance Coordinator? So, so moved. Is there a second? Okay. Um, all those, in, any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. The next action item I have for you in group one is to approve a Noonan High School course request. A Noonan High School is requesting to add introduction to software technology uh, to the curriculum. If approved, this course will become the foundational course that will be used to introduce students to computer programming, web and digital design, game design, computer science, and cloud computing. Uh, supporting documentation in the form of the course request is attached. Mr. Chair, I recommend approval. You've heard the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the Noonan High School course request. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 
Motion carries seven to zero. The next action item I have for you in group one is to approve an allowance request to cover cost escalations for roofing materials at Noonan High School in BP2. Approval is requested for an allowance adjustment to cover material cost escalation for roofing materials on the Noonan High School bid package number two. Funds were included in the guaranteed maximum price contract allowance to cover potential cost escalations. The allowance adjustment requested for material cost escalations is $31,889.72. The allowance adjustment request number 2.1 is attached. Mr. Chair, I recommend approval. You've heard the recommendation of the superintendent to approve an allowance adjustment request to cover cost escalations for roofing materials at Noonan High School bid package two. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Uh, action items group two bids. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The only action item we have in group two tonight is to approve a proposal for construction renovations and modifications to softball field houses at East Coweta High School, Noonan High School, and Northgate High School. Approvals requested for the proposal submitted by JNR Construction Company for construction, renovations, and modifications to softball field houses at each high school. Uh, JNR Construction submitted the high scoring proposal with a total score of 96.5 points and a total bid uh, $4,056,973, including accepted alternates. The proposal scoring sheet and bid tabulation are attached. And board members, this is something that we've had on the facility report for quite a while. Uh, these projects um, are a long time coming uh, for, for our softball programs at each school. Uh, and with your approval, we'll be able to get the process kick-started. You've heard the recommendation of the superintendent to approve a proposal for construction, renovations, and modifications to softball field, ho field houses at East Coweta High School, Noonan High School, and Northgate High School. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman, I got just a real quick comment. I'd ask Dr. Horton uh, yesterday when we spoke to uh, send me just some plans or pictures or renderings or whatever the field houses, and I looked at those today. And uh, boy, this is going to be exciting. This is going to be a great improvement uh, for our softball programs. Uh, Mr. Chief, thanks for, for sending those and, uh, and looking forward to seeing this get started. And uh, I don't know the time frame, but it, upcoming softball season, they'll be uh, in new field houses. So. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Moving to group three, trips. Call on Dr. Mark Guy to bring you trips. Dr. Guy. Thank you, Dr. Horton. The principal of East Coweta High School requests permission for the Marine Corps Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps to conduct a program trip to Charleston, South Carolina on January 19th through January 20th, 2024. Students will miss one day of school, but there is no cost to the school system. It does meet our out-of-state field trip guidelines. Recommend approval. You've heard the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the East Coweta High School field trip. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Uh, superintendent's reports. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll call on Mr. Keith Chapman, Assistant Superintendent for Finance, to bring you budget report and sales tax. Mr. Chapman. Budget report, we are over for the month and for the year. Uh, Good explanation for that. At the time we put the budget together, we were working on a state safety grant. We did not know where the funds were going to be expended, so that was not included in our budget. We're upgrading our Centegic system, made the first large payment over $500,000. That accounted for the most of it. We have had some overtime with maintenance and custodial with the start of the year, running short with custodians. And also, we pay a full year premiums on our property insurance, fleet insurance, at the beginning of the year, which carries for the whole year. Mr. Chapman, we anticipate that safety grant funding by March. Is that typically yes, time sir. frame? So we'll recoup we'll recoup those funds that show as an overage now. Sales tax continue to still excuse me continue to see good money there. Uh, just under three point one million dollars year over year increases, just over five and a half percent. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. Call on Dr. Guy once again to bring your staff and student attendance and then board goal report. Thank you, Dr. Horton. 
Uh, for the second attendance reporting period, the school with the highest staff attendance was Jefferson Parkway. Uh, the highest student attendance in the program area was Central Educational Center, highest student attendance for elementary, Northside Elementary School, highest middle school student attendance goes to Blake Bass Middle School, and the highest student attendance at the high school level, home of the Vikings, Northgate High School. Board members for your board goal report tonight. I want to talk about some more great work uh, that's going on in our school system. I want to call on uh, Dr. Chase Puckett, uh, who's direct, um, Director of Secondary Instruction, and Dr. Jillian Andrew, uh, who's Director of Assessment and Accountability. They're going to bring you a report tonight uh, on some good news that we've gotten recently on our SAT scores uh, and graduation rate. And Dr. Puckett, if you'll lead us off with the SAT report. <coughs> Definitely Coweta strong and we're excited to share that we've continued a trend over the past several years. The national average for the graduating class of 2023 on the SAT test was a 1,003. The state average was a 1045. In Coweta County, our average was 1068. We are excited because this is the sixth year in a row that Georgia students outscored the national average and the ninth year that Coweta County students have in turn outscored both the state and national averages. Coweta County School System's average SAT performance placed Coweta County 65 points above the national average. Even though we did see a slight decrease by two points, which we were anticipating with some of the challenges we faced the past several years, at the state and national level, there were significant drops in the SAT scores. So this year, system-wide performance on the SAT college entrance exam has placed the Coweta County School System in the top 15% of mean SAT scores among the 182 Georgia school districts reporting. It is great to be a Coweta County senior for the class of 2023, and we look forward to continue this trend. I'd also like to share that graduation rates for the state district and schools were announced a little bit after 10 o'clock this morning. The state graduation rate is at 84.4%, which is an all-time high for our state. Um, Coweta County joined about 100 other school districts with a graduation rate over 90%. We were at 91.7%. East Coweta High School's graduation rate was 90.8, Noonan High School 91.7, and Northgate High School 93.8. We're proud of the hard work that the teachers and students have done and are excited to celebrate their accomplishments. Board members, I do want to point out uh, that graduation rate is a record uh, for our school system at 91.7. Um, and as some of you may remember hearing me say before, uh, you know, graduation rate isn't just about high school. That is representative of a lot of great work uh, that goes on in our system pre-K through 12th grade. Uh, it takes a true team effort uh, to get kids graduated across the, the stage uh, in May of that senior year, and I couldn't be more proud uh, of the work that's going on across our system. So thank you guys for that. Up next, we have the facilities and construction report. Uh, Northgate, uh, the renovations and modifications are still Still lingering on the report, we're doing some 12 month punch list work uh, and we still are waiting on those uh, final pay requests and close out um, documents have now been submitted to the architect. Uh, Madras Middle, uh, Winston Dowdell fire alarm replacements, those projects are complete uh, and uh, closed out. Softball field houses, which you approved earlier tonight, will allow us to be able to get that work um, started and hopefully have it finished by next summer when softball starts again. Uh, band towers, the foundation work, and rough ends for electrical have been installed at each school, uh, and we're planning on delivery of materials uh, for the band towers uh, in January. Of course, the big one on the construction report continues to be noon and high. Uh, bid package one is substantially complete. Uh, bid package two, which is the gym primarily, uh, we anticipate uh, moving into the gym uh, in a couple weeks here at the end of October, first week of November. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of work going on. Uh, both inside and outside, um, working on the switchback uh, that leads into the stadium on the very bottom level and still doing some work uh, on the helical piers and all that you guys approved last month, getting all that shored up uh, off the corner of that ninth grade building. Uh, as far as BP3 goes, the academic buildings at Noonan, uh, the cast stone on the entryways is substantially complete. Um, brick 
work is, is proceeding. Um, you can see now if you go by, windows are starting to go in. So we're starting to get to the phase uh, where we'll hopefully have a substantial portion of the project dried in for winter uh, and all the, the moisture that comes along with winter time. So we're in a really good place and still anticipate occupation of that facility uh, in July, uh, this coming July, actually about uh, eight or nine months, not that anybody's counting, right, Mr. Cheek? So a lot of good work going on over there and uh, couldn't, be, couldn't be happier with the project up to this point. Last thing I have for you is just an update on the recent work of the Moreland and Glanton Elementary School District Line Working Committee. Uh, board members, you'll recall a few months ago, um, I asked you to, to allow me to establish a District Line Working Committee to look at the possibility of uh, moving between 100, 150 kids from Moreland to Glanton. Uh, Moreland right now is well over 100% capacity. I believe we have seven or eight trailers on site. Glanton um, is just the opposite. Glanton's sitting right at 48% of its student capacity right now. Uh, so there um, are potentially some moves that can be made. I'm happy to report that after those two meetings, um, the committee has come up with two map options uh, for us to consider. Uh, and what I would like to do now that we have those map options available to us is over the course of the next couple of weeks, uh, I would like to get the maps posted in the schools, uh, get the options sent out to parents along with a parent input survey so that we can get some parent input uh, on potential redistricting. And if we can pull all that together in the next couple of months, potentially uh, I will bring you a recommendation uh, right at the first of the year on redistricting from, Glan from Moreland to Glanton. Uh, so just wanted to give you an update on that work. Uh, can't thank the committee enough, the principals. Oh, Mr. Glover was here uh, for both of those meetings. They did some really good work, and I think they've come back with, with two really good options for us. So we can just take a look at the input and see where we go from there. But wanted to update you on that, on that process tonight. Mr. Chair, that's all I have. All right. Thank you, Dr. Horton. And uh, we're actually a few minutes early, so we'll move on to our public comment section. Um, public comment every um, every week. Hold on, I gotta get my notes. Um, okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and move on. I'm not gonna read it today. Uh, William Tolbert. Good evening, Superintendent Horton, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Thank you for seeing me and hearing me this evening. Uh, I'm a parent here uh, in Noonan. I've been a resident here since 2010. And uh, hearing all these wonderful things said about the schools, I can definitely agree with that. Uh, this, I'm born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Did a stint of school in Los Angeles, South Central Los Angeles. And I can say this school system here is the best school system I've ever experienced. I have two graduates from EC, and I have a ninth grader who's in EC now. And my concern is about um, the students bringing weapons to school. We recently had uh, an incident at EC where a young man bought a 40 caliber pistol to school. And it's really commendable, the student that bought that to light, because that's how it was found out. You know, we already know about the no snitching culture and, and you know, the difficulty of having people to bring this type of information out so these type of things can get thwarted like they did. My concern is, or, or not concern, but what I want to do is try to open up some type of dialogue and see how can we try to prevent these things from happening. I know we can't prevent what's going on in people's heads. It's not necessarily a certain demographic, like a thug or a guy with an agenda. You know, sometimes it's a kid that's feeling ostracized or bullied or going through whatever the case. Um, I just want to see how can we put some things in place to avoid uh, these things or try to quarrel them. So like maybe, um, I don't know, I don't have the solutions, but uh, metal detectors, uh, incentives for students who do use their voice and, and come up, you know, incentives probably wouldn't be much for a student, gift cards or something like that. And of course, to keep them anonymous, but uh, I don't have the answers, but I did want to initiate some type of dialogue on this uh, topic because it is very alarming and important. Um, I'm sure you all are aware of the 
young man in Griffin, our neighboring city that just got murdered last week after a football game. My son's 15 years old. These are 14 and 15 year old children. I couldn't imagine the pain that these parents are going through or what we've been witnessing. You know, go back to Columbine to, you know, all of these different communities. So I know things like this take money and processes and things of that sort, but I just like to try to initiate it, get a ball rolling. Um, I'm open to be involved in any type of way, <clears throat> include any, you know, type of efforts that I can, but, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. I would like to have a, a one minute comment because uh, I can uh, talk to that. And thank you for coming out. Uh, it is a concern of every board member sitting here. And you coming forward is how we go forward. That you coming here tonight is how we start making a difference. So I applaud you for that. And I thank you for that. Because without parent involvement, it gets really difficult. So, so you are a hero here tonight for coming out to say, hey, something's got to be done. We, we know that, like we, you know, right? But, but it, it takes community and it takes parents. And I thank you for speaking out. Yes, thank you, Mr. Tolbert. Um, and thank you all for being in attendance, both in person and online. Um, we'll move on to board comments. Are there any board comments this evening? Check extra today. All right. Is there a motion uh, to approve to enter into executive session to discuss personnel, real estate, real estate, and potential litigation? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. 